Hi. Have you guys seen Mr. Wing? I thought he was with you. He was, but now I can't find him. Where is he? <laughs> you won't find him here. <laughs> the king has returned. Mr. Wing is back, baby! If you haven't been reading along with these new comics, you need to start! Yeah, we rag on him for continuity stuff, but come on, people! The big bird is in it again! Read it for the big bird! And just what's behind those doors? Keep watching to find out that and much, much more. Probably more than you wanted or needed to know about the newest issues of Batman The Adventures Continue and Justice League Infinity. Time codes below if you want to skip around, but don't! You have to watch the whole thing! The algorithm Beast's appetite depends upon it! I can get you a deal on sweatpants if you don't mind Mayfield's mug on your butt. Huh. You mean like these ones with Maddie's face on them? Teespring.com slash stores slash DCAU Watchtower's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> There's all sorts of shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, blah 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 there too. We're gonna be doing a very big holiday sale here pretty dang soon, which will include a handful of brand new designs, so keep your eyes peeled. Now let's do comic things. Correction, speedrun stuff we messed up last time. We said the panel of Batman in a flashlight spotlight impossible shadow combo is reminiscent of Alex Ross's No Man's Land cover, but Power Legacy supposes it might actually be more in reference to the cover for Batman number 9 from 1942. And I'd say the same could be said about this issue's cover as well. Just some guy with a mustache reminds me that Yastitia, if apparently that's the proper pronunciation, the Roman goddess of justice, is named Themis in Greek mythology. Themis. Themis. Just, just all of them. Ta Temis? Themis? I ain't Greek. That's probably more likely who we're seeing here in JLU, to keep in line with all the other Greek gods we see all over the place. I've been wanting to do a video for a while about every deity we know exists in the DCAU, but is there a way I can do that without getting too religious? I guess it would fulfill the prophecy of this channel becoming the watchtower it was always meant to be. And finally, several people made the connection that Mayfield's M-Force is a lot like the Magistrate from DC's recent Future State event, which was an anti-vigilante task force also employed by the mayor. Though they're much more technological and, well, future-y, Gamer Sly Ratchet one also thinks they're similar to Harvey Dent's special crimes unit from Beware the Batman, and Ashley Touchin thinks they're similar to the Crows from Batwoman. But I don't know. I haven't seen either of those shows. I probably should. Get someone to watch my kid and edit these videos and make my webcomic and finish the special effects on my movie and mow my lawn and then we'll talk! DCAU references! There's actually quite a lot of stuff to talk about in both these comics, so I'm gonna flip this into maximum overdrive. Batman's in his B-Task costume on the cover. Twice. This new Miss Hanbury character reminds me a lot of Miriam, Baby Doll's henchwoman, in both appearance and demeanor. Though when we find out Mad Hatter is the one behind those doors, damn it, did I reveal that too early in the video? He says her name in quotations, so she's likely not all she seems. Mayfield practicing martial arts in a robe on his property reminds me of Mask of the Phantasm. Andrea Beaumont about to roll up and throw his ass to the ground. Wait, what's up with her sleeves in this scene? I've never noticed this. Sleeveless? Bruce trips her so hard that sleeves grow, then he kisses those damn things right off. It's funny how Penguin wouldn't let Barbara into the Iceberg Lounge in Girls' Night Out because she was too young even though she wasn't, but here she's just here. Though I guess she's out of costume and known to be the police commissioner's daughter, and Penguin is nowhere to be seen. Mr. Wing is here, but not Penguin. And Big Bird has apparently gone public being out in front of this crowd and news press. Did he leave Penguin stranded on that vacay spot? His key nest? What was in that lemonade, Mr. Wing? Has he set himself up to take over the Iceberg Lounge? What's next? Mayor of Gotham? The phrase second chance is in bold here, and while I might just be reading into it, that was the name of the final two Face episode for Batman the Animated Series, and we did see Harvey in last issue's flashback. Hmm. The bat signal gets destroyed, but this isn't the first time we've seen this. It got exploded in Gotham Girls by a robot Commissioner Gordon, in Batman Adventures Volume 2 by Penguin, may he rest in peace, and even by Terry McGinnis in the Batman Beyond episode Ascension. Guess there's always a spare. Who is paying for all these? Bruce Wayne? Weird how he keeps funding Batman stuff all the time. Like, probably not worth looking into. Clayface returns as well, back to his new Batman Adventures design, much less spicy than last time we saw him back in season one. He's back to normal low-fat refried beans mode, and we also see his human disguise from Growing Pains on the Bat computer. Clayface stowing away on the Batmobile is a lot like what Ink did in Blackout, and last but not least, we get Clayface melting away in a body of water, which we've seen before both in Mudslide and the Adventures of Batman and Robin Sega CD cutscenes, known to many as the BTAS Lost Episode. We should really do a Willet Cannon on that sucker someday. It even technically has a title. Do you know what it is? We do. Comic book references!
Yeah, so while the cover is pretty similar to the classic Batman number nine, which I have as a poster on the side of my bookshelf. There, see? <laughs> it's also kind of close in design and tone to the Bruce Wayne Fugitive Volume 1 cover, which itself is reminiscent of the Uncanny X-Men number 141, which was the first part of the Days of Future Past story arc, and seemed to inspire the cover for Superman Adventures number 37. But we're not talking about Superman, this is a Batman book. Get it together. Batgirl, out of costume as Barbara Gordon, has a scene where she sits at a chair at a computer with a headset, which reminds me a lot of her Oracle persona. Meanwhile in JLI, they're actually doing the Oracle, but more on that in a little bit. We're still on the Batman stuff, remember? Mayor Mayfield comments, what a mind, what willpower, which makes me wonder how Batman would do as a Green Lantern, but I'm definitely not the first to think about it. Batman in Darkest Night was a 1993 Elseworlds tale. Jeff Johns put a ring on it in Green Lantern number nine, and the Dawnbreaker of Earth Negative of 32 in the Dark Multiverse was an evil version of Bruce with a power ring from Dark Knight's Metal. And who can forget Graham Morrison's Bat Lantern who hates weed in the Green Lantern season 2 number 10, but that's probably the same guy from In Darkest Night. Maybe. And that's a lot of Green Lantern references for a guy who only admitted that Batman had some willpower. We're not talking about Green Lantern, we're talking about Batman. Get it together. <laughs> the Penguin's private entrance at the back of the Iceberg Lounge has now appeared multiple times in the series. First in Season 1's Digital Chapters 13 and 16, as well as Harley Quinn and Batman No. 3, where a group of villain hench people played a poker game, part of a prequel miniseries by Doubleton and Burchett to the 2017 animated movie with the vice versa title. When Clayface transformed into the Ventriloquist, it may have subtly implied that Wesker was back in Arkham, even though last time we saw him in the Season 1 holiday special, he'd gone clean. But he's returned to crime a few times before, and describing him as meek as a lamb might mean that Wesker is seen as a loser in Clayface's eyes for leaving the life of crime. Clayface is probably better friends with Scarface. They both have faces. Harley is also mimicked by Clayface, despite seeming to be on the up and up last season in the same holiday special. But it's like they say, Arkham Asylum is kind of a revolving door. Oh, and look at that! All rich people do have the same windows. Do we get a scoreboard plan for rich people windows? Maybe someday I'll have windows like that. Is this a good place for a Patreon plug? Patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower? Hmm. Let's not and say I did, I guess. Timeline stuff! While we don't have more timeline stuff than usual, this issue does give us a couple of substantial pieces that'll help us map out everything once the story's over. For instance, it's mentioned that Clayface's appearance in Mentors Part 1 was only a matter of months ago. While that was a year and a half ago for us, I do think that checks out. At least for now. That is, I guess, unless you take into consideration how Dini suggested season one was before Justice League, and how season two has kind of hinted to being concurrent or even after Justice League Unlimited, so long as you don't think too hard about how they contradict JLU. Which is what I'm trying to do. I just gotta keep in mind that they're doing this as if Batman Beyond never happened and thus nothing else after it matters, no matter how much they borrow from it. We also learn that Mayor Mayfield stepped down from office 15 years ago, which feels like a pretty firm placement given that we know from last issue it happened in Batman's first year, leaving us 9 to 10 years between then and present day BTAS due to the time skip in Mask of the Phantasm. Can't believe it's been 10 years. Another four years from there to Batman the Adventures Continue Season 1 on account of Jason coming back after four years, and then the couple of months we just mentioned. Not a lot of wiggle room to work with once we lay out our complete BTAC timeline, but who knows, maybe the wiggle room won't even be necessary. At least, that's what I have to keep telling myself. An entire room dedicated to the Australian children's musical entertainers, The Wiggles, is a waste of time and money, Maddie. Why, why would you even want that? It doesn't matter that their popularity skyrocketed in the wake of 9-11, something that I learned from Wikipedia. <sighs> Let's see, what else was there? Um, Hamilton Hill Jr. was Dick Grayson's fraternity big brother at Gotham State University, so I guess he's a year or three older than Dick. Um, Mayor Mayfield knew Thomas Wayne, which I guess is timeline info in the sense that it happened in the past. I wonder if that'll play into the whole Court of Owls thing they've got going on. And then there's, um, 
Nightwing's hair! How many times am I gonna have to talk about this? Why is it ponytail length now? He just cut it off last issue. Hair takes a month to grow half an inch. Is he a metahuman with hair growing superpowers? Is the ponytail clip on? I was supposed to say DCAU review suggested the metahuman thing and now I have to get... Am I even here to timeline things anymore? What is the point about this? I'm just yelling about hair now. Seriously, there's there's gotta be something better I could be doing with my time. Maybe even building that Wiggles room. <sighs> My talent is wasted here. I wonder if James has something else that I could be doing on the Watchtower. Uh... Other slash miscellaneous. Mayfield himself gets religious in this issue, which is yet another example of this comic doing something that couldn't have been done on the show. Broadcast standards and practices forbade reference to religion on Fox Kids, among a dozen other you-can't-do-that-on-TV things. Hence this old Bruce Tim drawing showcasing every single one of them. Another iPod phone in 1990 2021, and Clayface acts much more overly theatrical than we're used to in his DCAU version, but it's not unlike his character from the Harley Quinn animated series. The name is Clayface. Thespian extraordinaire recently portraying the juicy role of country boy bartending in the big city. I thought you were playing the role of literal piece of sh <laughs> But he's probably also under Mad Hatter's mind control, so I'll let it mudslide. <laughs> <clears throat> and we get more pop culture references in this issue than you can shake a lion-headed hypnosis cane at. Mr. Wing calls Bruce Wayne John Wayne, actor from the 20s through 70s, most famous for his western films. If she don't know who John Wayne is, she's too young for you. Barbara mentions Mary Poppins from Mary Poppins. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Nightwing calls Mayfield the Walking Dead, which is an age-old phrase describing someone who by all accounts should not be alive, but also of course could be in reference to the AMC TV show, <laughs> which started in 2010. I would wouldn't be surprised. See HBO Max at all. Bruce mentions Tweety Bird from Looney Tunes, which on top of Looney Tunes playing in old Bruce's living room in Return of the Joker and a handful of other quick nods is more evidence that Looney Tunes is fictional inside of the DCAU which of course we all know is part of a computer server adjacent to the one inhabited by the Looney Tunes characters, who themselves have their own versions of Batman and Green Lantern. I'm, I'm not gonna get into this again. Good Night Nurse is a 1918 Buster Keaton silent film and a 2000s New Zealand punk band, but supposedly originated with World War I soldiers due to so many being hospitalized. Though it, it might also be an Animaniacs reference. Uh... Hello, nurse! Similarly, Old Age is a Shipwreck is indeed a saying, Mr. Mayhem, credited to Charles de Gaulle, former president of France during World War II. I'm not even gonna try anymore, just, just, I am so white, okay? Leave me alone. But speaking of World War II, it's time for Justice League Infinity Easter eggs. It's a segue because Nazis. Correction speedrun, again! Nobody commented on any painting that Darkseid's death was similar to, but Ellie at the very least suggests it's similar to that of King Kong, both in the pose he's lying in and being called a monster. Becca, the Wonder Woman from Justice League Gods and Monsters, is actually from New Genesis, not Apocalypse like I said last video. Thanks, Void Null. You just have to be right, Void Null. It's, no, thank you for commenting. And lastly, while I said Darkseid and Diana playing chess reminded me of JLU's Wake the Dead, graphic content Content, great name by the way, suggests it may be more thematically based on the trope popularized by the 1957 Ingmar Bergman film The Seventh Seal, wherein the protagonist plays chess against death. Or, you know, Bill and Ted's bogus journey, I, I think that's more likely. Sorry. They melvin me. DCAU references again also. Going fast again. This panel of the Superman's is flying is very much like the poses from this world's finest Bruce Tim artwork, though the use of a better world raises some unfortunate Justice Lords flags. I wonder if we'll get to see more of just how Earth D is really holding up. Brainiacs, we are Brainiac Prime reveal, reminds me a lot of this moment from Superman Adventures number 64 with Brainiac Beyond. This issue is dope if you haven't read it. Read the DCAU comic my god! Vandal Savage's robot duplicates are a lot like those of Superman's at the Fortress of Solitude, and Savage's line, the angel of death is descending, reminds me of this spooky-faced bat baddie. Your angel of death awaits. Wonder Woman seems to be turned off by the idea of being romantically involved with Superman, continuing the Wonder Bat illusions in this comic. Though the closest we got to her and Superman being a thing in the DCAU, I'd say, was in one of Justice League's earliest story arcs, Paradise Lost, which has since eased into a close friendship. And, oh look, 
An Andrea Donoso cameo. <laughs> Look, that's probably the most deep cut uh, you have to know the DCAU as much as we do reference that I have ever made, and I'm not sorry. Comic book references parte dos. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, not really, but somewhere in the DCAU multiverse. When Superman ponders about what it'll be like years from now, when everyone I know and love is gone. It's very similar to his opening lines from Superman Beyond Number 1 by J.T. Krull and Howard Porter in 2012. While based on the Batman Beyond animated series, the comic was technically part of that pesky old Earth-12 continuity, but who's counting? Oh yeah. We are. Vandal Savage wrenching Jean from Mars and into his laboratory is a lot like Jean's original comic book origin, where Dr. Erdell accidentally teleported him to Earth, which was adapted in DC's The New Frontier. Plus, the Earth X Jean finds himself in a similar predicament to the Flashpoint Superman, who was also decrepit when found and rescued from a lab by other superheroes. Visually, the Earth X Jean bears similarity to Ray Thompson from the Justice Guild universe, as well as early Jack Kirby designs from the Black Magic comics, which dealt with horrors and deformities whose creepy stories served to inspire the creation of the comic's code authority. Well, the Green Lantern of Earth D's name was revealed to be Jorge. Jorge. So not Jose Hernandez like in Earth D's first appearance in the Legends Crisis special that I mentioned in our video on issue number three. But that's okay. Wonder Woman's name wasn't too naughty in that early version either. Things can change. However, Metallo of Earth X was confirmed to be Natasha Irons, even said out loud by our Superman, who recognized her on his own, or someone filled him in off panel, because this is the first time we're hearing about it, even though we guessed it correctly first. Don't act like you already knew. You didn't know squat. Or maybe you did. That's cool. Timeline stuff too. This time it's personal. <laughs> Memes. Wait, no, what is happening? What? What's going on? Okay, Justice League Infinity. There's gotta be more for me to talk about here, right? Let's see. This issue, Vandal Savage of Earth X says that he's 25,000 years old, which lines up exactly with what the main universe version of him says all the way back in Maid of Honor. The first time a meteor granted me power was over 25,000 years ago. Though, unlike his main universe counterpart, the Savage here is visibly ancient, which is kind of weird since we see a version of him that's at least 55,000 years old in Hereafter. I'm glad you enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, I did but I've had 30,000 years to reconsider. Looks pretty spry for a guy who's gotta be what? 55,000. So seeing him old and decrepit here came somewhat as a surprise. Though I guess sometimes it's different universe, different rules. So it's not like it's that big of a deal. Wait, is, is that really it? There's even less for me to talk about here? No, 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 no. This is my thing. I get to be on the watchtower, me. Other slash miscellaneous, the Squeakwool. <clears throat> These guns definitely took a cue from the Dr. Evil school of dance. <laughs> Earth X Aquaman mentions Lemuria's sacred spires. Lemuria being a supposed sink beneath the waves continent beneath the Indian Ocean, very similar to the concept of Atlantis, and may be intended to be from where this Aquaman hails. Superman D name drops Goering as the stand in for Adolf Hitler in this universe. Hermann. Hermann Göring, I don't know, was a real life Nazi leader, president of the Reichstag, Reichstag, <sighs> just prior to Hitler. Why is Hitler's name so easy to, why could he have an easy name? The Nazis having a castle base reminds me a lot of the Captain Carter What If episode and the Full Metal Alchemist movie, but I think the actual Nazis had castle bases too, right? I blame pop culture for my knowing fictional universes histories better than that of my own. At least I can teach my kid all about the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. And check out these Nazi Chitauri hovercrafts, man. <laughs> The statues in Vandal Savage's throne room, which include a Spanish conquistador and a couple of Greek or Roman archetypes, sorry Eustitia, it's one or the other, allude to classic comic book Vandal Savage history, where he literally was most notable historical dictators like Genghis Khan. And calling himself the chess master refers to one who has mastered chess, but also was the name of a series of computer games that launched with Chess Master 2000 in 1986. Superman associating the name Zod with the worst in existence really has me wishing we could see the DCAU's Zod. Is it this one? 
Is it this one? Is it this one? W.B. Yeats is directly mentioned, including even more lines from the Second Coming poem, from which the widening gyre line comes. And next up, for in that sleep of death, a line from the famous to be or not to be bit from Hamlet, which is also the origin of the BTAS episode title, Perchance to Dream. Kevin Conroy even played Hamlet in the 1984 New York Shakespeare Festival. Now you know that. Scoreboard! We get to up the points this time! For JLI, we get a point for correctly predicting the Infinity One Javelin would get destroyed. And another point for guessing this would be the Mirror Cracked Part 5. And another point for guessing that Metallo X would be Natasha Irons. That's three points on the board, baby! I knew this would start paying off sooner or later. All our guesses from all of this are just gonna be proven right or wrong in one fell swoop when these comics end, which is only two more issues for Justice League and one for BTAC, until they inevitably announce a BTAC holiday special for season two. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. We can't use this music cause it's copyright. For BTAC, Mr. Wing did return but not as the head of the Court of Owls yet, so I'll give us half a point. We're up to only negative 0.5 now, but wait a minute. I'm gonna go all or nothing on our scoreboard points and say that this is foreshadowing for a return of Mr. Wing, where he is revealed to be the one running the Court of Owls. Shit, I guess I'll set it to zero. Wait, wait, that's higher than we had before. Thank you, Mr. Wing. I knew there was a reason you're our favorite. Never change. Conclusion. These two issues had some genuinely great moments. This part where Tim calls him Bruised Wayne and Bruce pulls a... Everybody gets one. I love it. And Clayface becoming other supervillains to mock Batman. Classic. JLI had some really great stuff too, as usual. Like the moment of Wonder Woman meeting the other Superman. Very big, anybody gets to be Superman energy. And the whole, these people have been ground under the fascist boot heel for too long. I'll never pass up an opportunity to punch a Nazi. As far as the next issues go, I'm really excited to see the League and Alliance meet up with Amazo and wrap up this multiversal madness. And for the Batman book, who will the mysterious Miss Hanbury turn out to be? For whatever reason, that's what's got me most hooked. Barbara calls her an ice queen. It's Nora Freeze. The shawl actually worked. She's even wearing Mr. Freeze glasses. Okay, I just put that part in to make Maddie angry. Did it work? And yeah, you heard me right a minute ago. This was the second to last Adventures Continue issue of the season and Justice League Infinity is almost done too. And while we've shared our personal ups and downs on all this for the last several months, it hasn't been a complete headache. It's ridiculously cool that both Batman the Animated Series and Justice League Unlimited have tie-in comics coming out in the 2020s. DC knows what they have and that is millennials nostalgia goosebumps. Give me these comics for the rest of time. I dare you. But uh, I'm sure you can tell there has been some fatigue on our ends when it comes to these. And I guess that's the price we pay for trying to feel like kids again while having big smart adult brains that make it harder to look past the rough edges. We run a YouTube channel all about, hey, remember this DCAU thing? Or hey, I bet you didn't know about this DCAU thing. So we kind of have to be super analytical about it all. But at the same time, we're networked and or friends with a lot of the people that made or make this stuff. So it becomes harder and harder to stay critical. It makes it harder to come up with the funny stuff for these videos when screaming about that's the wrong battering isn't like the high that it used to be. I don't know why I'm gushing about all of this to you right now, but I guess the fact that these videos don't often do as well as say, here's all of Superman's superpowers or they used the wrong bat suit though it has been kind of getting to me a, 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 a lot lately these have been pretty fun while they lasted maybe more last year than this year but i'm also pretty glad to be able to stop forcing these videos into our routine soon i think the algorithm beast and you all will also be happy about it <laughs> happy to get back to our regularly scheduled shenanigans and our big epic storyline finale that we've been teasing for like two years Thanks, COVID. Thank you so much for everything. I love you. Reading these comics does make me feel at home. It does. I can't tell you how much it means to me to see this Batman, this Wonder Woman, or these creators back in my life. But I think I speak for all three of us data buds, which has been proven by neither of them leaving any comments on this section of the script at all. When I have to turn around and poke every timeline hole and scour every page for as many 
Easter eggs as humanly possible, and do so as fast as humanly possible to get the video out before it's too long after the issue's released, it's pretty draining. I'm sure I'll talk more about this in our final comic coverage video, but I think next year and going forward, the next DCAU comic series that releases we're not gonna do this. We'll talk about them in real time on our podcast. Yes, our podcast is actually coming back soon, not the yappy one, the other one. Subscribe to the Pod Tower channel so you don't miss out. And then we'll do the bigger, all-encompassing Easter egg <laughs> timeline, will it canon, etc. videos after the run is over. Or at a season break, or whatever happens, I can't predict the future. If I could, I would have correctly guessed everything for the scoreboard, duh! All of that to say, Thank you if you've been sticking around for all of these. I know there are those of you out there who commit to watching everything we upload and I cannot thank you enough for that. It is the best thing ever. Thank you so, so much. And thank you even more if you give us human currency over on patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower. Head over there if you'd like to get access to a bunch of cool stuff that no other database can see or interact with. And especially whenever we're in a slump like right now where like no video is performing well. We haven't had a hit since probably Miss Martian. That was like August? Oh god, was it July? Oh no. It's always amazing to know a Patreon check is gonna dump into our Watchtower database savings account to help us pay our bills and save up for bigger and better videos in the future. You all kick so, so much ass. Thank you forever. And with that, I'll see ya in the next one. Happy Christmas! According to Home Depot, it's Christmas now. <laughs> <laughs>